First, Asit, thanks for um, forcing me to come to Glasgow. Uh, when I walk the streets of cities like this, you know, Glasgow was the UK's second most important city. Beautiful buildings, beautiful streets, a gorgeous city, you know. It had Red Clydeside in 1919, the uprising to create a Soviet in Scotland. But it was, you know, crushed, of course. When I see cities like this, I think also about the other side of it. You know, there's a phrase from Walter Benjamin, every monument of civilization is also a monument of barbarism. I think of the famines in Bengal, the jute workers in Bengal sending jute to Dundee through the Glasgow port. I think of human beings from Africa enslaved and brought from Ghana to the New World and all those prophets getting sucked into cities like London and Glasgow. You know, between 1765 and 1938, the British Isles stole 45 trillion dollars a pounds from India. 45 trillion sterling from India. We never got paid for that. When the British left India, when we threw the British out, our literacy rate was 13%. So much for several hundred years of so-called civilization. Meanwhile, our landscapes were destroyed. You know, coal was foisted on India. You foisted coal on us. You were the ones that came and made us coal dependent. And then you left, and now you dare to condescend to us. When I listened to Boris Johnson, when I listened to people like Joe Biden, when I listened even more to Emmanuel Macron, all I can think of is how condescending you are. You condescended to us 400 years ago, you condescended to us 300 years ago, you condescended to us 200 years ago, you condescended to us 100 years ago, you're condescending to us today. You only know condescension because for you, colonialism isn't something that happened in the past and we defeated, we defeated you. It's not that. For you, colonialism is a permanent condition. And that permanent condition happens in two ways. There's the permanent condition of the colonial mentality. You want to lecture us. You want to tell us that we are responsible for all the problems because you'll never accept that you're the one principally to blame. You signed the Rio formula in 1992 on common and differentiated responsibilities. You like the common part. You like the common part. You like to say we're all in this together and so on. We're not in this together. The United States, 4 or 5% of the world's population still uses 25% of the world's resources. You outsource production to China and then you say China is the carbon polluter. China's producing your buckets. China's producing your nuts and bolts. China's producing your phones. Try to produce it in your own countries and see your carbon emissions rise. You love lecturing us because you have a colonial mentality. Then there are colonial structures and institutions. You lend us money and every time you lend us money, which is our money, which is our money, every time the International Monetary Fund comes to our societies and they tell us, here's the money we are giving you. We are giving you. No, it's our money. You give us our money back as debt and then you lecture us about how we should live. It's extraordinary. It's not just a colonial mentality. It's the colonial structures and institutions which reproduce themselves year after year after year. And let me tell you something. The climate justice movement, not clued in, in, enough on this. Not clued enough on this. The climate justice movement is a movement that says we're worried about our future. What future? What future? Children in the African continent, in Asia, in Latin America, they don't have a future. They don't have a present. They're not worried about the future. They're worried about their present. Your slogan is, we're worried about the future. What future? That's a middle class bourgeois Western slogan. You got to be worried about now. 2.7 billion people can't eat now. And you're telling people, reduce your consumption. How does this sound to a child who hasn't eaten in days? You got a clue into this, guys. You got a clue into this. Otherwise, this movement will have no legs in the third world. No legs. Later, I'd like to tell you about the International People's Assembly, a network of 200 political organizations that we're setting up rooted in the global south. We want to tell you what our issues are. But are you willing to listen?
I don't think anybody's saying, yeah, let's stick with fossil fuels and let's develop through fossil fuels. At least, I don't think that's the conversation. The conversation is the following. Who's going to fund the transition? And what will the transition look like? Do we want to modernize capitalism? Is that what the game is? I mean, the big corporations would like public finance to underwrite their modernization of capitalism. And I don't think that's a really good idea. Now, when we talk about climate finance, it's true. $100 billion a year, that's a joke, and they're not even funding that. Meanwhile, during the pandemic, central banks, mostly in the OECD countries, created out of thin air $16 trillion in order to underwrite businesses. They created $16 trillion during the pandemic to underwrite businesses, but they can't find $100 billion a year for the climate fund. Forget 100 billion, give me 16 trillion. That sounds like a better number. If we want a real number, let's stick to 16 trillion, the money they created during the pandemic. I think that should be our slogan now. We want 16 trillion, full stop. Secondly, it's not a question of funding alone. It's a question of technology. You know, the international patent system is broken. We know it's broken with the people's vaccine having failed completely. You know, patents is a way for companies to basically collect rent of our distress. That's what a patent is. It's a way for companies to collect rent of our distress. We need to destroy this patent regime, not only for vaccines, but for green technology. The technology has to be provided without consideration. Otherwise, we will not advance. So it's not just about finance. It's also about technology. Nobody wants to sit next to a big carbon fueled power plant, but we can't make the transition without money and the technology, which is why the condescension is so infuriating, because the condescension comes without a real conversation about funding and about technology until that's at the center of the conversation. And it is never inside when the big boys, when the so-called adults are talking, it's never the main discussion. The main discussion is pointing fingers. And I don't want you to point fingers at me because I've seen that finger pointed at me and my ancestors. I've seen that finger wagged at us for too long. We don't want to see that finger wagged at us. We'd like to see that finger write a check and we'd like to see that finger sign a law creating a new open source patent regime.